In 1994, a genocide took place in the East African country of Rwanda. It was partly due to deep-seated tribal tensions. Estimates are that more than half a million people were killed. Remarkably, the Rwandan people have in large part reconciled, but these events continue to reverberate. A decade ago, while visiting Rwanda, my wife and I struck up a conversation with another passenger at the Kigali airport. He lamented the unfairness of the genocide and poignantly asked, if there were a God, wouldn't he have done something about it? For this man, and for many of us, suffering and brutal unfairness can seem incompatible with the reality of a kind, loving Heavenly Father. Yet he is real, he is kind, and he loves each of his children perfectly. This dichotomy is as old as mankind and cannot be explained in a simple soundbite or on a bumper sticker. Some unfairness cannot be explained. Inexplicable unfairness is infuriating. Unfairness comes from living with bodies that are imperfect, injured, or diseased. Mortal life is inherently unfair. Some people are born in affluence, others are not. Some have loving parents, others do not. Some live many years, others few and on, and on, and on. Some individuals make injurious mistakes even when they're trying to do good. Some choose not to alleviate unfairness when they could. Distressingly, some individuals use their God-given agency to hurt others when they never should. Different types of unfairness can merge, creating a tsunami of overwhelming unfairness. For instance, the COVID-19 pandemic disproportionately affects those who already are subject to multifactorial underlying disadvantages. My heart aches for those who face such unfairness. But I declare with all my aching heart that Jesus Christ both understands unfairness and has the power to provide a remedy. Nothing compares to the unfairness he endured. It wasn't fair that he experienced all the pains and afflictions of mankind. It wasn't fair that he suffered for my sins and mistakes and for yours. But he chose to do so because of his love for us and for Heavenly Father. He understands perfectly what we're experiencing. Scripture records that ancient Israelites complained that God was treating them unfairly. In response, Jehovah asked, For can a woman forget her sucking child, that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? As unlikely as it is that a loving mother would forget her infant child, Jehovah declared that his devotion was even more steadfast. He affirmed, Yea, they may forget, yet will I not forget thee. Behold, I have graven thee upon the palms of my hands. Thy walls are continually before me. Because Jesus Christ endured the infinite atoning sacrifice, he empathizes perfectly with us. He's always aware of us and our circumstances. In mortality, we can come boldly to the Savior and receive compassion, healing, and help. Even while we suffer inexplicably, God can bless us in simple, ordinary, and significant ways. As we learn to recognize these blessings, our trust in God will increase. In the eternities, Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ will resolve all unfairness. We understandably want to know how and when. How are they going to do that? When are they going to do it? To my knowledge, they haven't revealed how or when. What I do know is that they will. In unfair situations, one of our tasks is to trust that all that is unfair about life can be made right through the atonement of Jesus Christ. 
Jesus Christ overcame the world and absorbed all unfairness. Because of him, we can have peace in this world and be of good cheer. If we let him, Jesus Christ will consecrate the unfairness for our gain. He will not just console us and restore what was lost. He'll use the unfairness for our benefit. When faced with unfairness, we can push ourselves away from God, or we can be drawn toward Him for help and support. For example, the prolonged warfare between the Nephites and the Lamanites affected people differently. Mormon observed that many had become hardened, while others were softened because of their afflictions, insomuch that they did humble themselves before God. Don't let unfairness harden you or corrode your faith in God. Instead, ask God for help. Increase your appreciation for and reliance on the Savior. Rather than becoming bitter, let Him help you become better. Allow Him to help you persevere, to let your afflictions be swallowed up in the joy of Christ. Join Him in His mission to heal the brokenhearted, strive to mitigate unfairness, and become a stone catcher. I testify that the Savior lives. He understands unfairness. The marks in the palms of His hands continually remind Him of you and your circumstances. He ministers to you in all your distress. For those who come to Him, a crown of beauty will replace the ashes of mourning. Joy and gladness will replace grief and sorrow. Appreciation and celebration will replace discouragement and despair. Your faith in Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ will be rewarded more than you can imagine. All unfairness, especially infuriating unfairness, will be consecrated for your gain. I so testify in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.